Um, you said you first want to have a financial clarity, and then you want to deliver an architectural reform. Mm. There are others who see it the other way around, like the EU Commission, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, the Scandinavian countries. They say we only give you money for the EU budget, mm. for the farm budget, if you deliver a modernization mm. of the CAP. Mm. There, is, there is no contradiction between uh, in both approaches. If you see, for example, the report that uh, the roadmap that the Commission has produced uh, for, the, for the coming uh, summit this week, uh, and you see all the different aspects of the uh, MFF uh, files, you will see some of them are in trilogues. Others are, have uh, reports and position from the Council, others position from Parliament. Probably uh, CAP is the one that is less advanced. But it's less advanced because there is a close relation uh, from the level of ambition and the means to achieve this level of ambition. This is the key element. Uh, CAP uh, is a large part of the EU budget. We think that it has to continue to be a large part of the EU budget because our farmers need this support in an open competition, in an open world. But uh, I, I agree with you, this progress can be done, and I hope it can be done from September. A lot of technical work has been done, but also to finalize uh, the 10 points that are already included in the negotiating box from the MFF that is related to a CAP and all the other aspects that are linked uh, with. So uh, I think, as I said before, there is no contradiction. We have to to make it in parallel, but we have to know at least the great parameters that we didn't know by the time being. We didn't know the dimension of the budget, of the whole budget. We didn't know the share of a CAP in this budget, so that will be clarified before going that. You will allow me one further question? Yes, and I, I pass to, the, to, my, to your Spanish colleague later. Uh, because Spain is very close to the Mercosur countries. Uh, the Brazilians say that we are uh, very near to an end of the negotiations, mm -hmm. but agriculture is still a problem. Mm -hmm. so what is your position? Uh, do you want an end of negotiations and how do you see agriculture? In the well, I think uh, EU has made uh, great progress in the last times. I think we, uh, EU is a great achievement for all of us as the European Union. But uh, in a context where trade is going into disruption in the world, taking into account the position of some countries, well-known countries, and important countries. Uh, I think the message from the EU, achieving an agreement with Canada, achieving an agreement with Japan, is a very positive one. If we can add Mercosur, it will be including an extra positive message to that. That being said, uh, when we are talking about the trade agreement, the trade agreement that is being negotiated on, on behalf of the EU by the European Commission, at, and not uh, we didn't agree 100% of all the negotiating positions of the European Commission. I think that if we take the, on the whole, uh, the approach of Spain and the European Union is a very positive one. But we have to finalize some concrete aspects that have to be clarified before going to the, to the closing of the negotiation. But I think that the prospects are, are bright, are positive, and I think that will be a win-win for everyone. Our position, as I said before, as an agri-food country, we are the eighth country uh, in the world as a net exporter. So that means that we have uh, offensive interest, and we are interested to open new markets and to provide, you know, uh, with uh, commerce. And I think it's also, from the political point of view, a very positive signal in the sense that we, uh, the, the trade, international trade based on rules, means something uh, for the EU and also for, for Spain. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.